Okay. Let's see. First item on the agenda. Um, we um, <clears throat> we we opened a a village business district special permit um, modification discussion. Uh, let's see. I, Lauren, I don't remember when that was. Maybe that doesn't matter. So, so we're gonna we're gonna open this public hearing and then continue it to June third. Yes, that's correct. The <clears throat> I spoke with the applicant. This had been previously continued, um, but the applicant wasn't prepared uh, to attend this meeting, so he is requesting that this be continued to our next meeting on the third. And we do have two things that we need to address at that meeting beforehand. So I would suggest that we schedule this at seven forty. Okay, and. Uh, let's see. Uh, just can someone make a motion? Motion. Right. Okay, second. And a second. All second. in favor? Aye. I'm sorry. Clark Brewer says aye. Paul Grady. Aye. Amy Glassmeyer. Glassmeyer, aye. Paul Caleri. Aye. Eric Potter. Aye. Thank you. Passes unanimously. Okay, um, let's see. The next one is Article P7, the land alteration bylaw. That was something that we went um, on a preliminary discussion with uh, with Tom Callahan. So um, uh, on this one, we already have an open public hearing for this, right, Lauren? Yes, we, this was one of the articles that got put on pause and we had postponed the hearings when the coronavirus impact, we weren't sure how it was impacting our public meeting schedule. Right. And then um, this had gotten continued to the point. Uh, and then in the meantime, the planning board had voted um, to boil down and table several items for a future special town meeting to not address it annual. Right. So on this one, what we're going to do is we're going to close the public hearing and uh, at the same time, uh, acknowledge that it's tabled for a future town town meeting. Second. Can someone make a motion to that effect? Just to say so moved is that works. So moved. Okay, a second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Clark Brewer says aye. Paul. Aye. Grady. Aye. Amy Glassmeyer says aye. Paul Caleri. Aye. Okay, you're voting because Fraser's not here, and. And I'm pointing at you wherever you are on my screen. And Eric Potter, aye? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous then. <clears throat> All right, we're, we're ahead of schedule then. Um, the next item on our agenda is the pending Harbor Village Business Overlay District Special Permanent and Site Plan Approval Application for 12487 L Street Discussion of Schedule and Process. Now, uh, Lauren, I understand you have put together a schedule, uh, but I guess I would I would like to uh, turn this over to you to go through with the board um, what you have uh, to to review and discuss. Certainly. So first, I'll just back up and um, discuss the intent behind this agenda item. As we've been uh, discussing for a while, we are we're awaiting a receipt of an application to redevelop the site of what's known as the Class of Harbor Inn. We did, we were in receipt of that last week. The zoning and planning board applications were submitted. The reason that it's going to both boards is that it comes to the planning board for a special permit in the Harbor Village Business District in the Overlay District. And it also is site plan review before the planning board. So that will be the public hearing process starting later in June for this board on another um, related, but again, we'll talk a lot about parallel tracks tonight. Another parallel track this process will do is it will go to the zoning board for their floodplain um, floodplain permitting, and Jen can uh, you know speak to that more if there's questions on what that will be doing. But what I wanted to talk about tonight is to, particularly in light of realizing that um, this is an, a unique time for all of us, an unprecedented one at that, that we are challenged in ways we've never been challenged before, trying to do everything virtually. Uh, there's limited access for gathering and limited access for people to be able to come to town hall to view material. So what Jen and I have been um, communicating is that if we can set up a schedule that um, really outlines how we will address topics on a predetermined basis, then that would be the most easily followable for, um, you know, for the public to follow if they want to tune in for certain aspects of this permitting process. 
And also, I mean, for, you know, to, for the development team to come and coordinate who will be making presentations to the board, because as we know, this will be a lengthy process. Um, this will be deliberative. And what I would suggest, which I can, um, I just have to bring up the file. I had sent out a temporary schedule and we we're proposing to start this application for the planning board on June 17th. What we would do at that meeting is we would have the uh, developer team make a presentation that would be an overview introduction to you know the big picture program, sort of the preview to what the whole process will be. And then at the next meeting, we would then address a certain topic. It could be architecture, it could be traffic and circulation, and we would chunk it off that way. That way we are streamlining our conversation. And we would also schedule follow-up conversations at later meetings that way questions that arise or revisions that are suggested, any sort of those things can then be followed up at a, at a date and time certain. Does that make sense or are you following for now? Well, you know, I, th I, think it, I think it makes sense to have a schedule. This is going to be a, a, a fair, it's a fairly large project. It's fairly complex. I think that it's important to give the development team feedback at every uh, step of the way. Uh, and identify what uh, what the next steps are in the schedule, what was discovered, what could, what could be problematic areas that need to be worked on um, for, for a next or subsequent meeting. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be difficult using this Zoom thing to get through this in a reasonable way and and another aspect of this that we have that's that's a problem is if if one member of our board misses uh, more than one meeting one meeting you can make up by reviewing the notes listening to the listening to the tape then if if you miss more than one then you would be ineligible to vote at the end and if it's going to be a six month or longer process um uh, that's a disaster. The, what's that? That's a disaster. Yeah, it's problematic in that uh, for this, it's a, it's a, um, it doesn't have to be, be a unanimous vote. It's a super majority. So four out of the five voting members would have to either, you know, vote for or if only three vote for it, then it's uh, a, essentially a denial. Well, I, I think that uh, in, in light of that, I think there should be a conversation with Brian on whether he intends to return before uh, the end of his term. And uh, because, you know, that could certainly impact things, couldn't it? Or I don't know how that all works. I agree with that. Well, we have elections coming up. Um, sorry, Lauren, is it? It's in June, right? June 26th yes. or something? Yes, okay. the, um, the ballot is out now. I know there is an option for mail-in and I, I don't have really specifics on when that will be ending. I can find that out from the town clerk and circulate, but I will um, just let you know that if for some reason Brian um, wasn't elected again, I didn't run again, whatever the situation may be. Um, and if we were a member short, that's the exact reason why you have an associate member. So then Paul Cleary as associate would be, um, you know, in the, in the voting body for the, and dirty of this special permit. So you would have those still five members. We still would, have uh, five uh, members. Uh, um, I, think I think you need the full board plus the associate member because right. for something that goes on for six months, you know, or, or longer, who knows what's, especially in the world we're in now, uh, it could be very easy to miss, for someone to miss two meetings. If God forbid something where, you know, it, it, let, let's just say someone were to get sick, you can right. easily couple miss a couple meetings uh and and i just think that uh having a full board plus the associate member he's gonna you know be something that's important for for this to get to start to finish yeah i i agree and i think um it and again i just we can pull up the schedule because we have meeting dates uh set up from now through i think november is what it was but if there's any meetings already that you know you cannot make, or if you know in advance before meetings are continued to a certain date, um, it'd be we, the sooner I know that the better. That way we can plan our schedule accordingly. All right, so, um, Amy, I did. I know. Amy, Amy do you have a question. comment? Uh, <clears throat> Amy, yeah, you have I would a like to know if we can inquire uh, with somebody at the state whether or not this particular expectation um, uh, can be modified in some ways so that small towns like ours are able to hold public meetings and conduct business because it's one thing when you have a larger board it's another thing when you're in a bigger town 
uh, and we're not in either. So um, is there any way to make an inquiry for understanding what other, other organ places are doing so that it's clear to us um, whether we have any options? I mean, the, the, the board makeup is, it's, it's a part of the mass general laws and whether it's a big town or a small town, it, it, it's the same requirement. Um, but it doesn't hurt to ask. I, I just think that our our um, bylaw is based on a supermajority uh, vote decides on any uh, uh, on on the the special permits for the village as well as the special permits for the for the harbor. Um, so I, I I would think we'd have to we'd have to hold to that uh, understanding. Paul, go ahead. But our bylaws, if I'm not mistaken, um, are not written having something like this ever taken into account because it's unprecedented situation. So I would I would stand with Amy on that and may bear some looking into. Uh, this is, you know, this is an unprecedented situation. I agree with Eric about having a full board, but it might be worth looking into to see if there's any to amend. I mean, they've amended everything else. I would suggest we have council coming to the meeting on the third and I will present this question to be answered. All right, that sounds great. Jen, you had a, a comment you wanted to raise, a point you wanted to uh -huh. make? I just wanted to say that, um, you know, it would take a bylaw change in town meeting to make that amendment um, unless there's a legislative change at the, go at the state level. And we have not, we can check and see if that happened, but I don't foresee that happening. I, they've, they have made changes to deadlines and appeal periods, et cetera. But Lauren and I can double check, but I, I would, um, the election is the end of the month, there'll be a write-in. And if you don't have enough to have two board members, you can have a joint meeting with the board of selectmen if you find an additional member. Um, but those are just some options where we can get more information for you. Right. I would think that the, the bylaw is, is as written still requires a super majority, um, uh, but it, it doesn't hurt to look into it. I, I just don't think there's much going to be much leeway. Um, go ahead, Amy. Well, since we have a member that we're not sure uh, is able to be present at all the meetings right now and, and, the, pres and the person's uh, um, actions over the last couple of meetings would suggest we don't know, we could ask to have a change in the bylaw that was a temporary change in the bylaw to allow us to do business. We should at least explore it. Well, we can't change the zoning bylaw un unless it's a, su uh, a, a two thirds majority at, at town meeting and the warrant is closing next week. You could also just postpone the meeting. If there's not enough, uh, uh, there's not enough members at that meeting. I think that that's, that's a viable option, Eric. Um, the easiest way to deal with it. If, if we don't have uh, at least four members at that meeting, we don't hold the meeting. Right. Um, but at, at any gonna... point where um, where more than more than two where two or more uh, members have missed uh, two or more meetings, we probably need to um, stop the hearing and restart it. Oh. That doesn't mean we haven't learned what we've learned in the previous meetings, but in order to maintain everybody uh, being eligible, I think I, that's same. an option. All right. Okay. It, you're not going to have to start over at square one. You'd probably have to do a initial um, presentation and then go through some of the ground, but um, hopefully we're not going to be there. Hopefully we'll have a full board and um, we're, I think it's going to be important for everybody to, just keep track and, and communicate to um, uh, to the team uh, ahead of these meetings to make sure that we have the, the full board. Right, I, if I could just second what Clark just said, Jen and I will be keeping careful track of who's at which meetings as this continues and we'll be, you know, as each, when I mentioned that we'll start a schedule in advance, which um, Jen can put up on the screen uh, when we're ready, but we don't have to stick to that. That's just to give an idea of the long-term proactive planning. But if for some reason we need to reschedule a meeting because we can't hold one, that's not a problem. It's just, I'm just trying to set a schedule this far in advance to try to give some structure to this process, if that makes sense. I but think we that's all a, pay careful attention. That sounds great, Lauren. You know, it's, it, it's a, a, a process and we go from step one to step two to step three. And if we have to make changes, we make changes. Wait, Clark, are you in a bunker? I just saw your video. Am I in a bunker? It looks like there's a lot going on. 
there. <laughs> Just his office. <laughs> oh, this with the all beard, this? with the beard, and all the and all the paperwork and everything. It looks like you, you've been hunkered down for like a couple, like ten to twenty years down you, there. You know, I haven't been uh, going to survivalist training yet. You, you think uh, oh. this, this is my stuff? That <laughs> picture of my boat in the harbor, and that's my mom, and that's my dad. Oh, it's great. I didn't see that before. That's awesome. <laughs> and you, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. okay. No, wait a minute. Here, is that better? <laughs> how about how about we have Jen share the screen so Clark's screen will get small, and then you can see the agenda. Here, perfect. Uh. So this was, um, and all, all kidding aside, this is just a tentative schedule, uh, first draft at putting things into our already existing calendar of meetings. So this is how I, you know, tonight's our intro. We can talk about peer reviewers in a minute. Jen and I will have an update for you on that. Uh, we would open on the 17th and do, like I said, the introduction. We would hear like, you know, like the elongated elevator pitch type of cover everything and we'll circle back. And then we would start chunking it out. Talk about site plan on one day. Talk about traffic and circulation on another day. Address architecture and landscape later on, affordable housing. And then we begin our, our strategic follow-up so that we make sure we have, are giving both the consultant, the developers, our, our attorneys, everybody who needs to get questions and get updated information to the board in a timely fashion. And then, you know, toward the end of this process, we will discuss a construction management plan and, um, you know, status reporting and how we are, you know, monitoring this be when it goes beyond the, the public hearing process. And then, you know, obviously at some point we'll conclude. So that's, um, those are the main topics that came to mind, um, you know, in, in my experience in previous public hearings and other communities, this is, you know, a good way to chunk this out. But if anybody has any topics that they think are missing here or, you know, any suggestions on this, I'd be happy to take your input. Amy, go ahead. Um, Lauren, yes. you have interspersed regular business with the business of the, the project that we're going to be reviewing. Do we have work on all of those intermediate dates or could we accelerate what we're doing by interspersing more dates to focus on this so we get done doing it faster? So I would say that this, this tentative schedule does keep in mind that we will be addressing other business as it comes up. Um, you know, for example, if for, if on August 5th, we don't have anything else to talk about, then maybe we can talk about architecture, landscape and affordable housing. We kind of need to play it by ear and say how our other workload is, but I put this together with the thought in mind that we would be tackling, you know, our usual business, our other applications, our zoning review, things like that. All right, so it's a five month schedule. And our, at our next meeting, we're gonna review uh, the peer reviewer um, uh, list and credentials uh, to see who's going to be the most appropriate for reviewing this, um, at, uh, reviewing this for, uh, for and, and giving the planning board um, the information and perspective that they need to have a full understanding of each issue. Yes, and Jen can speak to this uh, a bit in a moment. She's really been helping with the RFQ process. And what we will do is we will put out. We've been working with our procurement um, office and in, in town making sure that we are asking the right questions and putting out the correct RFQ, uh, that we will seek experts who have um, experience in waterfront engineering on a project of this scale with urban design background. We would just wanna make sure that we have the correct person for this and um, we'll be working on that. I, Jen can speak more to this. We don't know yet if we'll, we're hoping to have this um, turnaround and back by the third, but if, if we are unable to meet that by the third, depending on how quickly we can get responses, um, you know, that, that selection may need to push to a later date in our calendar, but that doesn't preclude us from getting started on getting the information going with this application. Would you like me to address the process? Yes. Yeah, uh, 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 Amy, I will take your question and then have Jen go through the process. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jen. Oh, you want? Okay. Um, so I met, um, we've had the RFQ in draft form since about February and then, um, worked with council to review it and, and of course everything happened and so here we are. So I spoke with Michelle Leary who is our procurement manager and um, she's looked at it, made some tweaks. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the next step um, is to determine how we're gonna procure it 
engineering services do not need to go through the full procurement process. Um, we could have a list of um, engineers that we could um, get that we know. I have to cough one second. That we know uh, have the you know four or five, six um, engineering permit, and we can mail this to them and ask for their response. Um, I just need to get the okay from the chief procurement officer, which is Chris Senior, which I will talk to him tomorrow. Um, in the event he said, I want, you know, we want you to go out, then that's a three week out, three and a half weeks out before we could award. So I'll, I'll know more on the dates tomorrow. So um, I, it's gonna be really important to have a peer reviewer, I think at every hearing uh, and uh, listen to what we're, we're listening to um, and be able to have a full kind of perspective on uh, what's uh, what what's required, especially for next steps, but um, to flag anything as quickly and upfront as possible that needs additional exploration by the um, development team. You Amy, you have a question? That. Are you flying swines? No, no, I, I mean, I, swatting I, flies. I will use the hand device. I'm very happy to do that as long as you pay attention to it. I just want to ask, can we make recommendations for people who would, could potentially be peer review? I spent a year looking at Harbor development projects last year, and I have a lot of project studies that have been done that are within people who are in, in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I would like to make sure that the, the project gets reviewed by people that have experience with this kind of development so that the benefit of the doubt is given to the design that we see. That sounds good as long as it's you're not um, uh, it's not determinative if you if you give a list to yeah, Jan list and Lauren identify you, who they are. if you can uh, uh, send that to Jan and Lauren and they can uh, sift through it with your recommendations provided that um, uh, you know I'll just give it, you a list of the organizations that I looked at who did okay. our studies already because I feel like if we pick the people that are around us it's easier but it isn't necessarily going to give the project the best review. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, we use Modulewski for these kinds of things for 30 years and Modulewski's not working for the town anymore. And uh, this particular project is, is it's a brand new bylaw and it's a very important development for the town. And uh, we want to get this right and have the best uh, resources, the most depth in understanding what the impacts are and really uh, have a focus of trying to make this the best project possible for the town or vote against it if it's not going to be the best project for the town. So yeah, um, uh, Jen, Lauren, uh, Amy can send you her, her list of uh, consultants. You can- uh, Yes, please. Those. If you could send them to both Jen and I, we'd be happy to include that in our, in our distribution list. And um, we also would uh, just recognize that we will be running this past our engineering department um, because we know that whomever is going to be dealing with this is going to be um, you know, involved with town infrastructure. It's a complicated site and with everything going on down there. So we would also look for their um, opinion on this and we would share that with you. I'm just trying to help. Yeah, great. Sounds good. Um, okay, is there is there any other feedback that you want? You wanted us to vote on the tentative schedule? I mean, is it acknowledgement? Just, it, is it acknowledgement um, acceptable that this sounds like a good game plan? Right, just looking for uh, to test the temperature here if there's anything you felt was missing or if you felt comfortable with uh, moving ahead in that fashion. So Amy? I, I hate to be a bug, but you know, we are basically contaminating the entire summer. Isn't there some way that we can consolidate this so that everyone has time to go on vacation and we are still able to accomplish the task. Uh, this is not a critique. It's just asking a basic question of everybody well, needs a break. This is a time when people could really use a break. And if we could consolidate this, I would rather postpone some of the basic things that we do in town to make this work. Uh, well, I mean, we only have one meeting in August, um, but you know, if we have a situation where we're not going to have a quorum or or something like that, then we, then it gets extended, um, as opposed to accelerated. I think that um, it's going to be hard to accelerate the schedule. I mean, 
you're assuming that this is going to be a normal summer for everybody where they get to have fun and go to the beach and like go to vacation, go to, go to Yosemite park. And where, where is that? The grand Canyon that you're in? Paul, you were going to, you were going to drive cross country, right? In a, no, you're, you're, it's the, it's the pandemic uh, stay at home all summer. Sorry. Yeah, that, Can we even go to Cohasset Beach? Postponed. Postponed. Yeah, at some point where people won't get sick and be like a thousand miles from home. If, if I could ask a question. Go ahead, Paul. Who's ringing? I don't know whose phone's ringing, but. Um, it's Paul. I just muted Paul Brady. Just, I think it was your phone. Sorry, Paul. <clears throat> so I'm just curious. Um, as we move forward and work in this new norm, this weather, say somehow miraculously, they say, okay, we can start to meet again in August for town meetings and such, which I don't think is going to happen. But so if we are meeting together, is it possible for other board members that may not physically be able to attend a particular meeting, can they still zoom it in? Do we think that's probably going to be part of our future? It will depend on the governor. It will depend on if the governor lifts the order. The only reason we're allowed to do this now is because the governor ordered it. It will depend on he, if he rescinds that order. I mean, in there the past, are some provisions that would allow maybe I think one or two. Again, this is something that we'll check into again with council and get back more info on you. But I know there is some way to have um, remote access. I don't think everybody can remote participate. I think we'd have to be in a central location. Someone else could um, access. But even with that in mind, I strongly doubt that we're going to be meeting together again, unfortunately, in, in the near future. So I think we need to be prepared for virtual meetings for uh, for the time being. But to address Amy, I think makes a great point. I mean, we're not trying to, um, you know, bog down people. I know summer is typically usually, um, you know, not the ideal time to have public hearings, but like there really is no ideal time to have public hearings. And especially with this, given what's going on, I did try to skip, um, as Clark mentioned, he noticed, I tried to skip a meeting in August because I thought by the end of August, everyone's going to need a break. Um, I'd be happy if the board would prefer to take two of our July meetings and address it you know, in one night, if we, if that's how the way the board wants to go, I'm just looking again to you to let me know how you want to address this. I'm, and again, we can, we can change things as it comes if we need to, but I'm just trying to get some structure as before we begin. Well, generally speaking, I mean, if, if it's a matter of one meeting during July and, and we have to go till 10 o'clock instead of leaving at nine at the latest, um, that, that might be a reasonable compromise, but I, I'd say, the really important thing is that we have a full board whenever possible. And I think that's what's going to probably drive this out, drive the schedule out. Uh, and, um, you, you know, if, if this get, if this, um, vacation schedules that people know about, we're going to, we we'll probably have to shift dates and, the, and that's all there is to it. So, um, Amy, if you're going to the grand Canyon, uh, for the week of the 5th of August, I, I'm just thinking that there's there's two problems. There is a, a long process and there's a shortage potential of people. So if we compress the schedule and we got people to commit to dates, we probably could increase our security of executing this process in a timely fashion. Um, that's all I'm thinking about. So that, that it, we can do it and it works right and there's enough space um, for other activities. So um, that's all I'm asking about. I, I would propose that I would come back with a revised draft of the schedule and I can consolidate a bit and then we can we can plan on using that and if we need to add a meeting or address move a date whatever comes up as this goes on then we can address it that way does that sound fair so you're suggesting that we we try and front load um, as much as possible knowing that uh, things might get uh, spread out uh, generally go ahead right. Paul. I mean, oh hold on pause your mute your mute hit your hit your mute button. I got him. Got me. Yep. Instead of front loading or back end, whatever is more convenient. I mean, at some point we're all going to meet. We don't know well, when. Well, I mean, I think it's set, it makes sense to set up the most aggressive schedule that's still reasonable, knowing that um, some dates are going to slide, that some dates we're not going to have a quorum, or you know, there's going to be a conflict and. And then that'll be built into the schedule. 
Is there a Zoom etiquette here to, to chime in? I, I don't know how this all. Go I'm ahead, not, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People have been waving their hands. I, I don't but, know what. It, I'm not trying to cut anybody off if I do. I just I, I'm, I don't use it as much as probably a lot of other people do. But to Amy's uh, and, and point about consolidating, the one good thing that comes of that for me is that I don't forget what just happened. So sometimes when like four weeks or three weeks go by, you can kind of forget what you were talking about or really ho really honing in on um, or what people were passionate about, really what the sticking points were and pick up where the conversation left off. So, you know, there is a benefit, I think, to kind of pushing through um, and, and, and consolidating a little bit because I think from myself, speaking for myself, I may be more uh, focused in uh, and, 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 and remembering the points from last meeting better. But it's either way, I mean. Look, Eric, I think, I think you make a valid point. I, I mean, the, what the reality is on these larger projects is um, – we get a presentation, we look at the facts, we have our peer review make suggestions, and then we tell the developer, hey, uh, I want you to look at, you know, the, 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 the left side of this a little bit more. There's something that's not right. Can you, can you do a couple of options? And sometimes it takes them, you know, yeah. and then we require to get the documentation, you know, like at least a week ahead of the next hearing. Sometimes they can't get it together so that's the only um uh snafu for that um uh trying to trying to accelerate and, and compress uh can the peer review use zoom i presume so that expands the options for peer reviews because we're going to run into the same problems of scheduling peers as we are going to deal with us ourselves and so if we're able to have People, I mean, we're going to have to, if we draw the circle bigger, we're going to have more to pick from. And I, and I just want to make sure that that's all right. And if we can facilitate in any way the process of review, or you give us the marching orders of the information you want about somebody that could be a peer reviewer, then we can give that to you. You can look at it and decide, nah, that person doesn't work. That person's great. And we, it'll be a calling process. So you don't have to do the, like, I'm happy to do all the web work you need in order to identify people that can be most helpful. Well, again, you're talking about who the peer reviewer is, and you're going to provide a list to Jen and, and Lauren. I think that's, yeah, but a that's, list. that's where it ends. If there's some follow-up, I'm sure they'll want to follow up with you. Do you know this person, and, and what have they done, and so, uh, what is their I'm reputation in the industry, that kind of thing? I am willing to commit to producing any information that they need in order to make the best decision possible. All I need is a list of the information you want to be able to look at individuals and I will provide that information from web and other sources. Thank you. Sounds great. Okay, again, Lauren, you, you're not asking us to vote on this. You're saying we, we've no. reviewed it, we've discussed it, we've given you some, um, some perspectives, some ideas, and I think it's gonna, um, it's gonna have to be a flexible schedule. Right. Right. I, um, like I said, I will work on consolidating a bit. So, um, you know, as per the discussion we just had, and we can review again one more time at our next meeting on the third, and then we're going to get started on the 17th. Um, and then, like I said, we're just going to have to be uh, right about communication, letting me know if you know you have a vacation planned, if you know you have a conflict, as okay. soon as you know about it. And um, I will follow up with everybody with like a simple doodle poll where you can just click out of all the dates that are, that we're mm -hmm. suggesting that are in our yeah. schedule so we know in advance. So uh, that's what I would suggest moving forward. And, and something that is also going to be very important is that any documentation that we have relative to an upcoming um, hearing, whether it's the first one, the second one, the third one, or the, or the tenth, we, we, we need to have the documents ahead of the day before. I mean, Majuluski sometimes he would send a report at five o'clock the night of our hearing. And that's not enough time. Now, in some cases, I think it could be less than a week, uh, but in general, there's no way, I, I, I don't wanna entertain reviewing documents that we get same day. I think that should be, that should just be the line in the sand. If they're slightly less than a week, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. I mean, typically, typically I'll review stuff as it comes in, uh, but um, you know, the day of the hearing is when I, I've, I've got everything. I take a final pass through it and in preparation for the, for the hearing. Do you think that's possible to, 
I mean, it's, it's true for the peer reviewer to make sure that they get their stuff in as well as the, the applicant and their team. I think that's really important. And I, I'll let Jen speak in a minute. I just, that's, that's also why we want to set the schedule in advance so that even if it's, we know it's subject to change, we'll have notes that it's subject to change as it needs to. That way there's a sense of predictability for everybody involved who knows when things are due. And, um, you know, we do our best to try to get you information at least a week in advance. Sometimes things happen and they come in and, you know, unfortunately there's a shorter time window. We're, but, you know, I, to I wholeheartedly agree that it's, um, you know, if something comes in that day, it's, I'm sorry, I need to get continued the next time because there's not been sufficient time. So, Jen, did you want to add? I wanted to say that that's uh, <clears throat> the way we will do it. And it's also, we have a set schedule for, for documentation when they need to be in for every meeting. Um, and we have been able to follow that in most cases. Sometimes we do have to work on the fly, but not with a project with this large. The zoning board um, very rarely will take anything the night of, only if it's a slight change, if it's a, an additional line or a clarification, they, they will take that welcome because welcome they can go on the fly. But this is gonna have to be like a joint. We all have to read our stuff well in advance as well as I get it well in advance. So the board is gonna have, unfortunately, a lot of documentation to have to review in advance. But we can make that, part of the requirement as well with the peer reviewer that a that they would get their information into us in a timely fashion that we set mm -hmm. and that they are available via zoom as well as coming in public when that day comes and and, and certainly um individual members can reach out to lauren um with questions on specific um products that have been put in the file or uh they can each individual member could reach out to another individual member uh, to discuss, but this, we can't um, have group emails that discuss any aspect of of the filing um, uh, without having an open meeting law violation. So, you know, somebody could call me, ask about it, but we can't get on a conference call. And then the email, the email roundtable question is is the big um, problem because it seems so easy. Okay, it's a question um and everybody gets copied and somebody chimes in with content that's a problem right the other the other thing to note is that uh chain of communication you know for example paul clear can't call clark get clark's opinion go talk to eric talk to eric about the same topic then call paul grady then call amy you know it's like you can't be that's going around open meeting law it's really intended um you know like be very careful uh because you don't want to compromise the ability of the public hearing process and you're really supposed to be um you know reviewing this and discussing it in open session right so um and then i just uh, it, again any questions anybody has on on information um please send to jen and myself and if we don't have the answer for your question we will get to the right party and circle back with you with the information so we'd be happy to take any questions and um in addition before we conclude this i just wanted to touch base we have paper applications for you. If you um, desire, we can coordinate drop off. It is a lot of paper. So I will tell you that um, just please, so we'll, we can plan on that. Um, who show of hands would like to pick up this week or if we can do I'll, it offline. Yeah, I'll take a okay. paper copy. Okay, Paul Clary, all right. So um, what I can, how about, I will plan to have it ready for you on Friday for pickup and I'll package it for each one of you with a name on it. Um, and again, just keep keeping in mind that the vestibule, I don't know if the vestibule locks at one, but I'll have it ready for you on, on Friday morning for pickup. So that'll be done. Yeah, we're gonna take, I just wanted to add two things regarding public meetings. I can't recall if we've had a full on public hearing here, but the zoning board and the conservation have that I've been a part of. Um, and so just so you know, one of the things that we're doing to address uh, the uh, public, so the, they can get information in advance as well as that we have a virtual meeting page on the front of the website next to the calendar heard on public meetings and public hearings so the public can look along during the virtual meetings. Uh, we've done that for the zoning board and conservation meeting. Um, my internet's unstable. Um, also that um, I'll wear your chain of communication so any questions regarding the hearings or what you need just come to Lauren and I and we can out to the board, um, if that makes sense. Are you, are you saying you're gonna post documents on the town website 
uh, for the public to access as a part of the public hearing process? Yes, that's what we've started doing. Um, where people can't come into the building and view public do documents. Um, if you go to the meeting, if you go to the front of the website right now and scroll down, um, you'll see that there's a virtual meeting page and it has the Conservation Commission documents for the hearing last week. And the week before that, we had all of the. Um. Hey, yeah, Jen, you're getting we, a little robotic. Jen, we're you're losing you. Information for the we're going to be talking about. Some... So those those documents yeah, are um, <laughs> on a link on the the front of the website, not through the planning board um, web page. Can you hear? Can you guys hear me? I you can hear me correctly. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Jen's just breaking up a little. What Jen's trying to say is that there is um, on the front page of the town website. There's a location where you can go down and click open applications. Um, for example, Jen set one up for the zoning board when they had their meeting the other night. They could view all the materials that were there that day. There's something similar set up for the Conservation Commission right now. That's what we'll be looking to do. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll have a location where all the documents live so that people can find the information for the whole application as well as follow along with what might be happening at a meeting. That's our intent. So we are really trying to do our best to provide public access via the website so that people could look at these resources in, you know, in lieu of the, the inability to either gather or, you know, have difficult in-person viewing. So we're trying to allow that to be done virtually. Oh, okay. I'm just looking at that for the uh, CONCOM and, and uh, it, it looks like it works. Um, you know, it's not robust in that it's tied into what's being discussed at the uh, at whatever that public meeting is, uh, and um, making sure that file names are clear and simple is is probably important because you know I noticed like for our our documents the file names are sort of all over the place. It looks like a few documents like the landscape and vegetation plans could have been consolidated, that kind of thing. Right? you know, just to make it easier on everybody, the naming, um, you know, like the the civil engineer says, all the plans, but really he just means all the civil engineering plans. So things like that can make a difference for uh, making the information as accessible as possible. The right naming system and uh, putting them in a list like uh, what you've done for CONCOM or what was done for CONCOM. Okay, we can certainly, we'll, do our best to make sure that things are as user friendly as possible um, on the public facing side of the website. Okay. I have a question. Yes, Amy. Can you please run quickly through the way in which we are going to conduct the evaluation? Um, I appreciate the fact that we're all going to read these documents, but it might make sense if somebody on our team actually was responsible for some aspect of one of these like a topic so that when somebody is asking a question about a very specific item, not everybody has to worry about the fact that they know every item in, ex in the same depth. There are certain fear areas in this list that I know a lot about and some of them I don't know anything about. So what is the process by which we're going to do the review? Well, I think the goal is for all of us to be experts in everything relative to uh, the special permit and site plan. So I don't know if we can, I don't know if we can delegate uh, out, um, you know, landscape and architecture um, uh, to an individual planning board member. If an individual planning board member has a particular interest, that's that's fine or expertise. That's I'm not fine. I just don't know if we can delegate within the planning board. Okay, so I'm not talking about delegating that that one person would be the only person that knew. I think all of us are going to read everything. The issue is going to be about when a very specific point is raised. If I, if you tell me I need to know X, I will spend the extra time to know all of them and know X. But I'm just trying to figure out how we can be as efficient as possible in light of the fact that there's 500 pages of material. Clark, may I speak a bit? Go ahead, that? Lauren. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just um, suggest that um, this that's. Part of why we would do the follow-up meeting that way, um, you know, the developer would make their presentation on architecture that day. 
you would have your, you know, you'd hear the presentation, you'd go into your questions. And then that's why we'd also have the peer reviewer on staff. And that's why we're looking for, um, you know, the perfect peer reviewer that either is somebody who is, uh, you know, an expert in multifaceted fields or a firm that has somebody who, you know, whether it's waterfront engineering that night or talking about urban design of the public space, somebody who has the expertise. And that's why we bring in the peer reviewer to do this. Um, because, you know, we, we don't, and just no, no planning board out there has all the resources amongst us that we have a diverse set of skills and backgrounds and that's great. But what we're looking to do here is hire a professional expert to come in and weigh in and do that technical analysis to help the board with matters that are beyond, you know, their, their comfort zone or what their skill set might be. Does that make sense? It, it does. I, I still think that we're going to, at some point, be without that expert and we're going to have to recount issues. And so it just, I'm just asking as a way of trying to think about how we will be able to be as good as possible in responding with the facts on the pages where the facts are. So, I mean, I do, I do peer review all the time and I do it with huge volumes of material. And the only way I've ever seen it work was when you get allocated certain things and you're supposed to read everything at the same time. But your job is to focus on something so that you help your colleagues through the process. So I'm well, but we're not the peer reviewers. We hire the peer reviewers to do our thing. It is true. Um, we and, have to make and a decision after the peer reviewer leaves. We, we, we will want to have, do be able to do our own research. Um, but, but unfortunately, because we're an elected body, we, we don't want um, to, to some extent, our independent research has to be done independently. Um, obviously, anybody on this board who has a perspective, like I'm an architect, I say the elevations are terrible, the view, the view corridor is a nightmare, or whatever comes up with, with uh, this particular thing. I, I remember when there were a couple of, uh, this is like going back 10 years, a couple of wind turbine uh, submissions that, that came to the planning board. These were large, big hearings and the neighbors were, were all upset and they were raising all kinds of issues of like harmonics and infrasound and flicker. And there were all kinds of related impacts that these uh, devices had on, um, on uh, relatively adjacent um, uh, businesses and homes. And it was all kind of new information, but each of the planning board members had to kind of drill down on it themselves so that we were prepared at our hearing to, to, to convey to the other board members what we found, what we thought, and what we, what we thought could be done as a mitigation me measure or, um, you know, how that would affect the outcome or a, a votable project. All right, um, let's see, it's 6.52. Um, we, we have one more item on our agenda, and that is um, proposed improvements to rules and regulations. We're gonna uh, t pick up at another meeting because we wanna cover some ground uh, on our uh, uh, easement warrant article. Uh, so up front, I'm going to give everybody a chance to say whatever's on their mind. Uh, but up front, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that last night, last night there was a board of selectmen meeting. Uh, Lauren and I attended and and made some sort of upfront comments about it. Um, uh, the um, the chairman had received uh, comments from from two members of our board, Amy uh, Glassmeyer and Paul Grady, and uh, they they were. The, that board of selectmen uh, were they were at the point of uh, putting the putting the uh, voting to put the easement article on the warrant. Now they had changed some of the language. Um, Paul Dorensis, town council, added a few things and made some clarifications to the warrant language. Um, uh, I sent that out to everybody today, and the the the, the three main um, differences from what 
uh, council, uh, our council, uh, Karis North, um, put together, which we voted on. The three major changes were not identifying a specific owner that we would negotiate, say the owner of record that the Board of Selectmen would negotiate these easements with, to make sure that 17 parking spots would always be um, maintained for members of the public and not the private developer and there'd be no loss of parking spaces. And that um, uh, the easement articles would be in a format that could be filed with the registry of deeds and you know it with with real surveys not diagrams um, but that um, these easements would be negotiated between whoever um, is the owner of record and the board of selectmen um, I, I know I made some points and and Lauren uh, made some points and there was a number of questions that were asked there were um, uh, the, the discussion went on for about an hour and uh, what what I think at this point makes sense is to find out what um, what Amy what Amy's perspective is on this uh, first and and then we'll we can uh, discuss that and then um, and then go to Paul uh, and then uh, the other members of our board to um, to see what what the latest um, level of thinking uh, or um, uh, information uh, might be. Amy, I, I'd like you to uh, say what's on your mind relative to this um, uh, and try and be as succinct as possible. Uh, thanks. Uh, for uh, full disclosure, Clark and I had a 45 minute conversation before we met this evening and I asked a series of questions that were pertinent to my concerns. Um, and so I just want to let everybody know that. Um, I really basically have uh, two concerns. The first concern is that in general, when you're dealing with a project like this, you usually get through the planning review process before you make adjustments. Number two, uh, um, Mr. Durensis, who was the lawyer last night at the Board of Selectmen's meeting indicated that the practice that we were pursuing, in his opinion, was not best practice. Number three, I sorry, I meant to say three things. Number three, I would like Clark to explain to everyone why the language was changed with regard to the ownership of the property because there is uh, information about the property and the ownership um, which has legal um, issues associated with it. So my concern is that we are just about to enter a planning process and there's lots of information that probably can solve tons of problems, but we're not looking at it before we make an adjustment uh, that has consequences that are on the surface predictable, but underlying them, they are not predictable. Um, number two, uh, we have a responsibility to the town to ensure that the decisions that we make are the best decisions for the town and at the same time, the best decisions for the, the applicant. And I feel that the information that we have is insufficient for us to go down the path of um, uh, dealing with questions of easement. And um, I will say that in my conversation with Clark about the, why we were doing this now, um, uh, I would like him to, to explain to everybody what he explained to me because it was new information that I didn't have. So my real concern was that there is a lot of information that we don't have to make a decision. We're not pressed by any sort of legal basis to make a decision now. And we're going to start a review process that is likely to answer many of our questions. So yeah, just to follow up on Amy's um issue, Durrence has changed the language from CHI on the Warren article to owner of record because there's some pending litigation uh, between some parties relative to the ownership of the um, of the project. And you know, I don't want to get into great detail on it, but uh, um, town council did make some uh, caveats that, um, that uh, precipitated the um, changing of the language to owner of record, whoever that is. 
is who would be negotiating easements with with the town. Um, but uh, I think we did have a discussion about um, uh, the 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 importance of of this easement issue being able to be negotiated um, at our last meeting, and and that is because there's critical infrastructure of the town. That's uh, basically the James Brook um, sewer outfall uh, that leads to the tidal gates that runs under private property currently. And I don't know if anybody knew that. I think that there's been some confusion over time about that parking lot um, to the north of the Memorial Wall. I think most people in town would think that that's the hotel property when we know from seeing the zigzag um, uh, diagram last uh, week and a half ago that um, half of it belongs to the, the hotel property and half of it belongs to the town and it's a it's a zigzag and unfortunately um, within that zigzag we have critical infrastructure that's that's in the uh, that's on private property and um, um, until the, uh, a survey, a new survey was done, perhaps nobody knew about this. Um, so I, I would say that I think it's, I think it's critical um, to make sure that that infrastructure is in a place where the town can legally access it. Um, and that's what this, these, these easements would do. Now, as, as preparation for our last meeting, I had asked uh, Lauren to check with town council to see if, to see what, what the, whether prescriptive easements were in place now for that critical infrastructure or, or just what would be involved with following up on the prescriptive easement option. That's a, that would be an alternate to uh, a negotiated easement exchange. Uh, and and typically, my understanding of how that works is, um, if someone thinks they have a prescriptive easement, um, basically that's an adverse possession claim. Hey, I've been using your property openly and notoriously for over 20 years, and therefore I have some ownership of it. Um, um, and uh, in following up on that, it was. It, I didn't get the information for our last meeting, but I, I just wanted to, to know what, what the other options might be for um, the, the easement discussion in, um, and, and the easement uh, discussion with the Board of Selectmen and uh, ultimately on the floor of town meeting. Uh, so going to land court to get, uh, to, to uh, exercise, um, um, uh, adverse possession claim uh, can take a year and that's um, uh, uh, and there's no guarantee that you get it. That's why this negotiated option to me seems like a really good option for the town to have access, legal access to their critical infrastructure. And at the same time, the, the, um, the developer can um, um, try and work through some of the other issues that their uh, development um, has uh, realized. I don't think that these are related to our um, uh, our um, site plan and special permit process directly. Uh, that they would be indirectly, and I would expect that if this went to the floor of town meeting if we voted for it to recommend it and the selectmen decided to vote to recommend it to be put on the warrant, I, I still would expect that, and the, the town voted to allow the selectmen to negotiate. I think that they would wait until our special permit site plan review process was completed and that we'd make a recommendation to them on what the easements might be prior to their taking up the negotiations. Um, Paul, I see you've got a question. Paul Grady. Paul, you, you've got to click on your, you've got to click on your, um, your mute button. Also muted. Yeah, I was muted. 
Mute. Yeah, you, you, you got a point. No, I just said you think or you know is what I was just looking at when you just said that. I think I know what. You were talking about, I'm sorry, I lost my train. I was trying to unmute myself. It's all right. About the board, you think that they'd carry <laughs> forward if we vote to proceed. Well, the, the chairman of, the, of the, uh, the Board of Selectmen has said that they would want us to make a recommendation to them at the time of negotiating the easements. Based on everything that we know about having gone through the site plan and special permit process, in uh, the nature of the project and those negotiations that that took place, um, but that the chairman of the board of selectmen is is retiring from his job in a month, so we'll be we'll have somebody else. But I still expect that that would be a reasonable thing for the board of selectmen, whoever's chairman, to ask for in uh, trying to get the most the best information that they can and make a, a good decision relative to this uh, easement exchange. So I, I guess I, I think is still the answer. I don't know that they would ask us. Clark, thank you, question. Clark, so, so I, I just want to follow up on my, why are we uh, dealing with this? Uh, was this something that we originated? I don't recall us starting this, this warrant. Maybe I missed that meeting. But that would help me to understand it. That's, uh, I, I'll just go through quickly. I just have three quick points. That would be my first question to Clark. And, and the other one are really just opinions and statements. I agree. Amy, I think that what you're saying, I think, is really something that should be uh, said at town meeting. And I think that you should make those points at town meeting because I think that would educate the citizens um, or at least give them some perspective before um, before placing a vote. Um, and then uh, my last point would be after Clark really explains why we're even dealing with this, because I, I don't quite know why we are, and unless the board of selectmen are kind of passing it over to us to give their, our stamp of approval when they could have just proposed this themselves in the first place. Um, in essence, yeah, we're not really doing much here. We're just, um, we're just putting an article in front of the town to vote on. Um, uh, to give the, the Board of Selectmen the right to negotiate an easement down the line. Um, so I don't know that we are putting ourselves in an adverse position, um, but if I was, a, from a citizen's point of view, I can see your point, Amy. Um, but maybe, Clark, you can tell me why, why this is really something that's on our agenda uh, and why the Board of Selectmen just didn't move forward with putting it on the warrant themselves. <clears throat> Yeah, and you know, what we typically do on the planning board is we do public hearings for any zoning articles. And this is sort of similar, but it's not a zoning article. All right. So um, I think we had, we had asked that um, the selectmen take up this easement issue and it seemed like they, they weren't gonna do it. And when I talked to Kevin McCarthy, he said, look, I, I don't, you guys are the experts in this kind of stuff, so what I want is to get a vote from your board um, with some was based on some language uh, for the for the warrant article. I want you to take the first pass and not us. Uh, and in that conversation, I said that that's fine. That's completely reasonable. We can do that um, again because it's it's a little bit. I mean, the selectmen have to deal with all kinds of diverse issues, but in terms of land use. Um, that makes sense. The, the, the chairman just wanted us to take the first bite at the apple. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And, 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 and like I said, you know, I, I, I agree with um, the, the larger concern in that the, 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 the horses get in front of the cart potentially when, when you're looking at this. If this were something that related to actually the, uh, the special permit approval, um, which in my opinion, it doesn't, and it really doesn't even grant any, so we're not even granting an easement here. We're granting nope. the, to the Board of Selectmen um, to negotiate an easement, which there's a, a, val, a pretty strong argument would be in the town's best interests. And I think that sort of stuff is for the citizens to decide at the polls if they don't like and don't trust the selectmen that they have in power to make these decisions. Um, but this article itself, is 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 doesn't relate to the actual project. I don't think 
in, in, in because nothing is actually, I mean, it relates to the project, but nothing's actually granted. No, there's no permit granted or easement granted or any other rights. It's basically empowering the board of selectmen to, to, to have the, the right to negotiate something that is, is probably in the best interest of the town in the long run. But, you know, those, the concerns of Amy, I, I think, are certainly ones that the, the town of, uh, on the whole should hear at some point. I think that those are those are valid perspective. Interestingly, um, we usually um, go to the board of selectmen with zoning articles. We ask the zoning, we ask the 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 selectmen to um, uh, a lot to to let us have a public hearing. And um, and during those public hearings, usually we change the language. We we review things like uh, unintended consequences, and then we take a vote on the language of the of the warrant article and send it back to the selectmen. And, and at that point, we may or may not have actually voted to recommend the uh, the, the zoning language. Like for example, for the harbor. For the Harbor uh, Village Overlay uh, Business District, we didn't have a unanimous vote of recommendation. And um, for the language that we gave to the selectmen, our first pass, if you will, uh, that ultimately got changed by town council, we only recommended that it be that the selectmen put it on the warrant. We didn't actually vote on the language of the warrant article. And I, I think because it's sort of a back and forth, it's a ping pong ball process where, um, you know, maybe Jen and, and Lauren were alluding to this um, at our last meeting, that we start the process, selectmen pick up the ball, and, and then everybody wants to have the last chance to vote for or against uh, based on the most current information. And, and I think I'm just gonna make one more point, Lauren, and then you can go. Um, um, and I think Amy's made the point where there's been new information in the last week and a half that's come out on this. And we should have had that before we we actually did did our vote. And um, you know, the perspective I gave to the selectmen is each of our boards makes the best decision that we can based on the most amount of information that we have at the time. When new information comes out, that's new information. It might have changed what we think about it, but we can only make a vote based on the best um, best information we have at the time of when we have to vote. I'm sorry, Lauren, you were going to make a point. I just wanted to um, address a couple things because I think um, this is a unique situation, and I might be able to provide some clarity as to how we got here. We this I think. Mm, this started at the planning board level because we just so happened to be looking at this site sort of under a microscope. We knew that, that there was somebody interested in redevelopment. We've heard informal discussions in previous months. Um, we were already, you know, th this team was already looking at their site. Uh, in the investigatory process, we recognized that, you know, our infrastructure is in private property. This needs to be addressed. Um, there's, you know, the parking concern where it straddles the private public property. There are things that need to be protected for the town's interest. You know, they're also due to a jagged property line that being the, you know, looked at as the optimal location to access a parking garage. That is how this conversation organically started. This came to the planning board, I think, in January, February, when we were talking about um, our public zoning articles. And we, we spoke about how this isn't a zoning article, per se, because this is a power that the Board of Selectmen has. Um, that we would need to request a town meeting that the board is like. And so in the early stages of this discussion, this was really um, a recommendation from the planning board that the board of selectmen seek to address this. The board of selectmen then um, turned around and were interested in hearing from the planning board, you know, as this is the board with the expertise in land use matters. And that's how this, it did get delayed for a bit, um, given the coronavirus pandemic and, you know, the postponement of town meeting and all of that. So you know, here we are trying to pick up the ball and get back up to momentum. And now all of a sudden we have, well, we've known this application is coming in, but not in receipt of it. Um, knowing that eventually we, in the interest of the public infrastructure on the site, we would be interesting, you know, interested in negotiating easements there. Um, the idea of reciprocal easements is that, you know, the town gets what they need in terms of their infrastructure and access to the parking. And then, you know, the development team 
you might be able to access over a portion of town land. That's the reciprocal nature of it. Um, these are parallel tracks and they were intended to be parallel. And it was never, um, you know, we, it was never discussed that the planning board would be making specific dimensional requests of an easement. It was just that the board of selectmen would be able to do this in the future. And now here we are, um, you know, we're having this discussion again with town meeting warrant. All of a sudden we're, we were notified uh, in, a, in a time crunch of a period that we needed to have a meeting to address this, that the board of selectmen requested that the planning board would address language. And that's how this happened. And then at the same time, we then received the application that we have been anticipating for months. Um, so I just want to highlight that, you know, the, the receipt of the information, though it was anticipated, it was never anticipated to be in advance of this easement discussion that we had started back in February. Mark, you're on mute. I'm sorry, Paul Grady. Um, uh, I'd like to see what you have to add or, or what thoughts you might have uh, based on your, your comments uh, yesterday and 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 where we are, I'd like to have as robust a conversation about about. Uh, I'd, like about letting, I'd like to see about letting Amy finish first, Clark. I don't know if you were done. Um, I guess I have only one question based on the conversation and where it's gone so far, and that is: at any time, have we had any signal from the developer <clears throat> that the situation was calamitous? and needed to be addressed outside of what would be an organized planning process that we already had anticipated would take place. And the reason I asked that question is, this isn't going to be the only issue that comes up that we're going to have to make decisions about that are not apparent right now. And that is why I think that Mr. Durentis actually said to us that this wasn't best practice. Best practice is discovery, then decision, not decision and discovery either alongside of it or past it. And that is, that is a central issue here, which is we've uncovered one thing, we're dealing with a complex site, we don't want to keep cycling around issues that could potentially emerge. What we want to do is utilize the information that's been generated, do, undertake a deliberative process, do the discovery necessary, solve the problems, and close the deal so that we don't end up four months from now, like many towns have done in the past, this is why they're so prescriptive now about what they do, is they see the process through of discovery, and then they make the determination of what are the, the uh, uh, overriding issues that they need to deal with to bring a project like this to closure. So it, it does kind of make, I see what Amy is saying in a sense that on one hand, we're dealing with the special permit uh, for the project, but then we're handing over um, a, a rights to the Board of Selectmen to grant easements over a project that we're going to be overseeing and making determinations on. If you look at it from that pers perspective, wouldn't it make, make more sense that the planning board, or is, I don't know how, yeah, how, how the town bylaws work, where the party that were, the, um, you know, the final determiner of what the easement <laughs> were because they would have the most information at their disposal um you know with regards to the project and that's kind of falls in line with why the selectmen have put it in our hands for tonight even though i don't think we're necessarily making a decision on anything but we are giving the rights to someone else to make a decision that we are going to be bound by if the Board of Selectmen negotiate an easement that we then determine in our fact findings that isn't necessarily the best one to, to enter into. And blamed for. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, you, ra you raise a good point, Eric. Um, it, unfortunately, it's a chicken and egg uh, kind of thing. It, 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 it's possible that we could identify and have the... Um, have the applicant identify what the easements are that they need or want, and then um, and then what they would provide something that's an elaborated version of the diagram that we looked at earlier. Um, and but then you know if we went to uh, 
the floor and we were done with our process and then we went to the floor of town meeting and town meeting um said no we don't want to let the selectmen negotiate easement and easement exchange based on what the planning board put together then then securing the infrastructure the critical infrastructure easement for the town um, could be put off indefinitely and my concern is it would be put off into this um, uh, prescriptive easement uh, adverse possession land land court uh, arena that would take quite a long time. Clark, have Resolve. you heard anything from the developer that would make you think that you have evidence that there is going to be something that leads us into the land court? I don't have any. No, I, I'm just saying I, I haven't heard anything about them wanting to go to land court. I think it's the town that would might be forced to if there's no path for negotiating. Um, go, go ahead, uh, Jen. All right, I hope I don't break up too much. Um, the, my understanding is from law from working in the planning for the selectmen's office. The selectmen are the only ones who can negotiate an easement on town property. They were looking to this board to make a recommendation, and then they were they are the only ones that can negotiate it anyways by law. Um, so the reciprocal easements are being looked at to for both of them. There's a benefit for both parties. Um, I believe that the selectmen could just place this on the agenda. However, this board wanted your input. Um, the only way to place an easement on town property is through town meeting. Um, so I've just, I've had to do a lot of easements in town. So I just wanted to state that. Okay. Uh, um, Jen, if you've got, gone through some uh, easement negotiations in the past, can you, can you give us a couple of examples, like a worst case scenario? And well, then- worst um, I know that there was, we've done licenses. We had, a, so there was a gas line that needed to be run um, as it was emergency to be run across town property to the church uh, property behind town hall. It was a degrading line or they needed the line and we couldn't do it until we went to town meeting. Um, and those were only twice a year. Another one was something on the property of the common. The, the church does not own the property, they are on town land, they needed something and it had to wait, but they were able to grant them a license. This is private property and then there's town property. So the swap needs to happen via a vote of town meeting from everything I've been through. As I mean, far as the, the, the private property issue, um, a, a private citizen can grant an easement to the town. A, right. a private owner can grant an easement to the town. It's the other side. It's it's the town granting an easement to the private uh, entity that requires a vote of town meeting for authorization. Right. It has. We we the town can't grant an easement to someone else without going to town. Right. Um, it also happened on a parcel um, off of Jerusalem Road this last year on town meeting, and that had to go to a vote. But, but, but you still haven't answered my question. Do you have any evidence that there is a sentiment on the part of the owner of the property that we would be um, in some way uh, in danger of seeing the planning process through, accumulating the best information, determining all the other easements that might be required in order to make this project work? There is no contestation in this conversation about this project going forward. What we're trying to do is to find the best outcome and we've got information that can allow us to find that but but making a legal decision that as um uh was stated by eric could just encumber rather than enable and and i don't i know that doesn't seem that way but it could encumber decisions that we then have to need make and then unmake because of that that's well, it's, an, it's entirely possible that whatever we vote on tonight or whatever the selectmen vote on that um, that the, the actual easements will be different than what's shown in the diagram. Uh, and the, the, the reality of the negotiation of the selectmen would be that uh, it could change something in an approved project. Let's just say we're six months down the road and we've approved this project and then the thing goes to the uh, Board of Selectmen to negotiate the easements and they negotiate something that's different than what we had approved as a part of our project plan. 
uh, the developer would have to come back to us for a modification um, to the to the project. Um, uh, Jen, Jen, and then and then Lauren. I think in this particular case, again, I think we're mixing up. I think we're, we're mixing up the parallel tracks. Yeah. Um, this is for a particular reciprocal easement. You may well find during your public hearing process, which we shouldn't really be talking about since we're not in it, um, that you need to do additional easements, and then you'd have to go to town meeting again if it involved town property. Um, but I think that this is a very specific reciprocal easement that's being discussed. It's not, so we have to just keep remembering that parallel track because we can't well, mess it, up the apples and oranges. So, and Jen, you just have, not to interrupt you, but you, you also, every, I, I think it's important to note that, that, there, that we're, we're not granting any easements tonight. No. We're, no. we're, and we're not, we're, we're putting an article in front of the town citizens to decide whether they feel comfortable giving the Board of Selectmen the, the right to make this decision with regards to these properties, which is why I don't think we're actually doing much right now tonight uh, uh, by if you voted to approve this. You're, you're, what I do think is important, and this is I think Amy's points are very important to be made at the town meeting, but I don't think we're doing much. We're not granting an easement. We're not granting anybody any rights. We are, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't, you know, who the owner is or isn't, I don't think even impacts, uh, what the, our decision. We, it's whether or not basically we feel comfortable putting this warrant, you know, out there for the citizens to vote on whether or not their, their elected board of selectmen can negotiate this easement. I don't see it as being more than that. If it were the, uh, you know, voting on an easement, that is an entirely different thing. Right. And Lauren, you wanted to make a point. <clears throat> Yes, I just want to say first, I'll note that because it came up in the Q&A that George McGoldrick is here and has his hand raised. And if anybody has any specific questions for him after this deliberation, we can promote him so he can speak to you. So if that's something that you'd like, you can let me know. But first, um, I just also, I want to address something that Eric said earlier. And, and before I even address this, I just want to state that just for the record, I have no personal gain on whichever way this goes. My job here as town planner is to assist you with your technical get information, coordinate all the ducks in a row. Um, you know, there are, there are options to proceed with this. You either choose to make a suggestion on the language before you tonight that, um, you know, our, our special counsel prepared, it was then went to the board of selectmen, it went to advisory, it went to town council. Town council made edits that our special counsel approved. Um, if the language has a provision in it that it, you know, the second provision underneath the parking, is that they won't take any action until a special permit process by the planning board is granted. And what I just want to make clear tonight is that again, what Eric just stated, you're not asking to establish easements. You're asking for the ability for the board of selectmen to negotiate this in the future. If you don't want to choose to do this now and move through this and provide that option upon conclusion of the special permit process, then we just move forward. We condition as part of the special permit, knowing that it would need to go to a special town meeting and that would just add length of time to this progress and i think that's just what the board needs to understand again that this it gives you an option it does not necessitate action if if the, if this were to move forward and then you decide that this easement is not how you want to negotiate it and you're not on the same terms then it goes back to town meeting for a future a future path forward but there are options for you you're not pinned to either what direction you want to move and just again this the intent of this article is to to address that, yes, we want to have easements negotiated in the future. The Board of Selectmen is the body that would do that, pursue it to a planning board recommendation when they have the details on this, and it would just allow for a more timely matter to move through this. So, again, I'm not directing on either way how to go. I'm just explaining to you both scenarios here, and I'm happy to take questions if you have questions on what I just said. And, and the, Lauren's point was that it would be done in a timely, uh, it could be done in a timely manner as opposed to um, uh, a lengthy drawn out um, manner when thinking about this project uh, isn't necessarily as fresh as it as it might have been. Um, uh, Paul, I would, would like to hear what you have to say and then uh, go back to Amy. Is it just the board that's listening right now? This is a public meeting and there is a, we have two attendees on the line um, and anybody else who might join who, in. Who else, is, who else is on, Lauren? We have on the attendees is uh, George McGoldrick and Carrie Thompson from the Board of Selectmen. 
Okay. And so this is a public, this is, of course, it's a public. Um, yeah. Public oh, period. yeah. This is recorded and um, will be available in the future. So just any anything said here is in a public meeting. It's We're not in an executive session or anything like that. So no swearing. Uh, you know, the thing I've heard through this whole project, it seems like it's a rush job. And forgive me if I'm wrong, but it just seems like there's a push, there's a push, there's a push, it's a constant push. You know, and the thing that I'm unclear about, I don't even know who the owner is. I know it's Cohasset Hospitality, but who is the owner? Um, you know, I don't know what the what their background is. Maybe what I'm saying is best left for town meeting, but it may be uncomfortable. That's why I was interested in having Dorenzis here tonight, but that didn't get approved. And I understand that that's what I got from Lauren to go Karis North. I'm not familiar with Karis North either. I understand she's special counsel for the planning board. Now is she appointed right. by is she appointed by the selectmen? Or is she appointed by the town manager? I don't know who she is. I just she got not appointed. Board. I mean they're they're hired for us. Uh, for the, for this for this purpose by who? It's, who it's, hires? Who approves that? I thought the board of selectmen had to approve that. I'm uh, just, Jen, I, I made any clarification, so forgive me. Okay, These okay, I just I will answer that. So the board of selectmen allowed to have the town manager to appoint special counsel as needed. Uh -huh. Karis has been working with us for a couple of years. You've met okay. Karis. She is the lawyer who came and gave our answer. I just don't yeah. know that much about her. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you, Jen. No, so, no that's I, fine. So she's from Murph, uh, Murphy Hesse Toomey Lahane, and she's been working with us for a couple for several years. But a project like the, of this magnitude, and um, I think I've seen some of the principles, quote unquote. But we, I don't know who the owner of record is. We don't know anything about them. Um, it seems to be kind of, uh, you know, vague. You know, to approve anything on the planning board part, or my vote, or anything along those lines, I'd like to see it spelled out clearly, succinctly, because. If something happens, heaven forbid, to a project like that, and I'm not saying it's going to, but a project that fails, then what? We have an empty lot or something like that sitting over in probably one of the most magnificent spots in the town. And again, I don't wish that. I'd love to see a completed project, but I'd like to see it laid out and laid out clearly, succinctly, with a clear path to follow that we vote on. It goes to town meeting so the people know exactly what they're voting for. And, um, you know, that's pretty much what I have to say about that. Okay. Uh, and Amy, you were going to make a, another point. I just want to uh, note that, um, the schedule that we have laid out for us for this review process is coincidental with, it will conclude at approximately the same time that the next town plan, uh, uh, meeting might occur. And so there really is, a, you know, I, I understand the question of timeliness, but the way we're progressing and the expectation of the possibility of disruptions associated with us starting back up are sufficient enough to expect that we might actually get to November 4th before we actually have our analysis done. So there is no um, breakneck reason that a decision like this has to be made now. And, and I would say that at having attended the selectman meeting last night, I didn't get a sense that um, this was about expeditiousness. I thought that it was really about thoroughness. And that remains the same question uh, that I feel is on the table, which is we want to make the best decision possible. We want to be the best planning board possible in making that decision. And while the, we were discussing this, you're right, starting perhaps in February, the consequence and the playing out has not been one of these nice smooth slides down the hill. It's been pu punctuated by lots of different things. And so if, if we were in jeopardy, if there was danger, if the town was going to get sued, if something terrible was going to happen, we would be facing a very different decision, but we're not facing that decision. What we're facing is, is a serious evaluation of the efficacy of the project so we make a good decision. And I, and I feel like we should take the opportunity to do that. Wait, so, uh, Amy, I, I, Amy Clark, can I just ask a quick question? Yeah, can I ask a quick question of, uh, because I think it's important for Go me. Go ahead, Eric. Is, is, Amy, what is it, is, in your, in your, it, it, what, in your in summary, what decision do you see us making tonight? Because it's, that's important for me because 
I see us as not really making much of a substantive decision. I see us as voting to allow a warrant to be put on a town meeting. Um, but in other words, I, but you may see it. I, 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 I want to, I'd like to help speed it because it, it could change my mind on what this, you know, what, what do you think the decision is that's being made tonight? So our original council's position, and please correct me if I'm wrong, was that this was that making the this decision and putting the warrant on the the um, to the vote at this moment was not the right thing to do, but to collect the information, weigh the situation, evolve the project, and then bring it to a conclusion. And he said, "But if you want, if you must do this." then I alter the language in the following way. But his recommendation was to follow the conventional process, which is to do the fact finding and resolve the issues and then deal with the legal questions at the end. And okay. I'm, I'm just reporting what is practice. And just my add on, he has suggested, if I'm not mistaken, I was at the meeting last night too, is putting it off till fall. And that's, that's what uh, I was saying about that. And then uh, Paul Caleri, I'd like to get your two cents. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank everyone for chiming in. Um, so a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> I think it's important to, I understand what Paul's saying about maybe who is the owner, but what we're talking about is an easement. And the easement benefits the town. And this is what I mentioned the last time we met when we originally had voted on it, is that <clears throat> this language that we're talking about is just so that the selectmen can grant this easement, reciprocal easement, by the way, so that we can continue to have the water flow discharge out to that space. Now, currently, that's running under private property. So um, this kind of like needs to happen. I mean, just so everybody I think is clear, like I know that it's not gonna happen, but if the owner of that property wanted to cut off that water passage, just saying, we could have a more serious issue on our hands. Does everyone understand like how it works? Like right now we're illegally encroaching on their property. So it's a reciprocal easement benefiting both sides. And I think, you know, we need to look at the principle over personalities here. We can't pay attention to like, I, I'm pretty sure that the people that are behind this project, are going to be successful. This project's going to be a success. And if they don't, like many other projects, the next person who takes it over will get it done. So I know that there's been some issues with some personalities or whatever in town, but like, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about, and what the attorney was talking about last night, because I also was at the Board of Selectmen meeting, was that the easement has to have the physical description. And it obviously it was presented to us in the form of a map just for like visual purposes, but the registry of deeds wouldn't accept a map with visual, you know, images. They, they want language that references uh, boundary markers and the rest. And so it would be clearly spelled out. So, my interpretation of what the attorney was saying last night was it's not ready to get recorded now, but after the Board of Selectmen issue and grant this easement, then the language will have to get written up and recorded, as I said, referenced on a certified plot plan so it can be a recordable document at the Registry of Deeds. So, all we're talking about tonight, we keep going around and around, but it's just us saying that the Board of Selectmen has the authority to work out this easement. And regardless of who 
if I own the property, if Clark owned the property, if my next door neighbor owned the property, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. That's not the issue at hand. I understand what some of the concerns might be, but you, we can't hold up some sort of easement because of who owns something. I mean, it's, you know, that again, principles over personality, you know? So that, that's how I understood what the attorney was saying last night at the meeting was that it's not ready to go yet. But once the board of selectmen approve, the proper language will get issued. Uh, my law version of this plan will get recorded at the registry of deeds, and then the town will then be safe. Right now, the town's not necessarily safe. Everything on Elm Street could get flooded out if they block the James Brook. Just saying. So they're doing us a favor, and that again, a month ago when we had our meeting and we voted on this to send it over the article and the language. It was only about that issue. So there may be other issues that come up down the road and we might find those out. You know, you mentioned other easements that may be needed down the road, but right now, this is before us tonight to send it back to the Board of Selectmen so that it can get on town meeting for June's meeting. This started back in the fall. And the town's people voted already and said, yeah, let's redevelop that site. And so this isn't, that's in the fall, that's nine months ago. And here we are, this is like another piece of the puzzle. So do we want to push it out again? I mean, to me, it was, it was presented as an issue by, I think, the owners, because the town didn't know that our utility ran underneath the building. Well, they're, they're private property it was brought to us and then it was like okay what do we need to do and then a solution was presented this is what you need to do and now they've done this this and this and like others have said like you know it would be nice to have this project done and they had done everything that they were asked to do address this address this address this and now it's being presented again yeah, there may be a little tweak in some of the language, whatever, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I, I just don't understand what the concern is. Other than some people getting hung up on what seems to me like is just personalities, you know, which I don't think we should be hung up on because that has nothing to do with, you know, the well, town's benefit. We're talking about the benefit for the people in Cohasset. Well, Paul, I mean, I think you're making, um, I think you're making great points that the revised language of the bylaw, um, I'm sorry, the, the, of the warrant, the revised warrant language did include requiring that the, the actual easements have meets and bounds and be in a form that could be filed at the registry of deeds. It also added the 17 parking spaces and it, it changed the identification of uh, CHI as the as the owner um, to be owner the of owner of record. Whoever the owner of record is, that is the entity um, who would be able to negotiate with the um, with the board of selectmen for to protect the town's infrastructure. Mm. And and I think it's I think I personally think it's it's critical to to get the easement to to protect the town infrastructure. But it's going to be a negotiation. And I think, uh, like I said at the beginning, to a great extent, I think that the, the Board of Selectmen are going to want to know what, what we've thought about the easement issue um, prior to their negotiating to get our input so that they can negotiate based on uh, what we've learned during the special permit process. Um, but it, in terms of uh, it being timely, I think it is timely because we want to protect that infrastructure as soon as possible and not have another separate parallel track of uh, a land court filing and uh, trying to get a prescriptive easement. I just think that that would be a waste of resources for the town. Let, let, Clark, let's, uh, let me just play devil's advocate here, guys, because right. let, let me play devil, devil's advocate very quickly. Um, what happens if we, <laughs> I know what Amy's saying, you know, we, we want to make sure we do the right thing with regards to this project, but after hearing Paul talk, what if we, um, 
you know, we don't uh, uh, um, put this on the article in the warrant, and then the the present landowners um, were to slap a trespassing case on us, and and then the town citizens say, well. Now we have a real problem on our hands and it's going to cost us fifty to $100,000 to litigate it or and another who knows how much money to get a new water pipe because we can, we're trespassing on private property. It was in front of the planning board to give the citizens the right to vote on um, whether or not to give the selectmen the power to authorize this easement. I, I almost think that after hearing Paul, you know, there's a, the public benefit aspect of it, which I think is a great point. You may be, you know, maybe, you're, you may, maybe it's a you're in a worse position if that happens. Well, there are other outcomes. If, if for, I mean, we could, <coughs> this board could vote to not um, recommend this warrant article to the board of selectmen. We could vote too. We could have a split vote. It doesn't really, you know, in a way it, it doesn't matter. And the selectmen could decide they want to put it on the warrant anyway. Um, and, I mean, because they understand there's an emergent uh, issue to resolve. Um, but we don't know all the potential uh, future um, uh, pitfalls if we don't have this option set up and in place, uh, because uh, I think that the timeliness is the, is the, the major issue here, and that's why we're talking about it. Um, Paul Grady, you were going to say something else. No, I was just listening to Paul. I don't know where personalities are coming into play. It's just more clarification. Um, yeah, I don't know of any personalities. I know I have no personality whatsoever. And, and if, as Eric says, this is really not for the planning board, why don't we just punt it? Send it back to selectmen. You know, then it comes back. Well, I mean, yeah, we could, we could not take any vote. Um, if I asked for a motion and nobody gave me a motion, then we'd have nothing to vote on. How do you mean? If I gave you a motion not to vote? <laughs> well, you could. Um, let's say I asked for a motion to vote on the revised uh, warrant article language that grants the right to the selectmen to negotiate easements. If I asked for that motion and nobody wanted to make it, no one said so moved, then we wouldn't come up with a vote tonight. Well, I look we at this. nothing to vote on. I think that everybody in this uh, forum here wants what they feel is for the best for the town. Um, as do I. Sure. We're, we're all invested in it. That's why we have this job. Exactly. So what I'm thinking is uh, my problem is with the clarification, as you said, with the ownership, with what uh, uh, Council Dorenza said. Um, you know, in my own personal feelings about it, just feeling rushed. Right. So I'm standing on that. If someone can help me along the road with that, I'm well, fine. You know, I, I would say that when when uh, Amy asked to have Dorensis come to our meeting to talk about this, I I I, I kind of was like, I, I don't think that it would be appropriate for Dorensis to come to this meeting, given that um, he made his his thoughts known last night. Um. um he did cite that uh and something that hasn't come up uh in this meeting yet that you know we canceled a bunch of zoning articles we're trying to make town meeting as as light as and quick as possible for public safety reasons and and that that's one of the one of the reasons to uh to not have this on the on the um spring town meeting warrant but um Um, Amy, did you want to make another point? You're muted. You're muted. I just want to say that it really is too bad that Mr. Durensis isn't here because he may be able to have offered us a way to think about this that um, enables us to have a better sense of um, the, a lightest, the lightest touch possible, right? The most effective, but the least encumbered way possible. And um, I, I will say that, that um, as much as you feel that the, the warrant needs to be lighter and all of those kind of things, 
We're trying to. No, he her. he said that. No, no, He's, you you said you said I know you said. He, I said that he said that the warrant right. needed to be as light as possible because right. we're in the middle of a pandemic. That's right. That's right. And 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 I, I I sorry if I I was blah 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 and didn't get, actually get it all out. Um, and you know we're talking about trying to accelerate the review process. Um, and if we don't re accelerate the view review process, we're going to be at the p point at which we're going to have another town meeting. We don't have a documented case, as Dorence has said, would be best practice. I, I think Paul is is uh, very helpful in pointing that out. And uh, the, uh, if I thought the town was at risk in some truly dangerous way, I would feel that I was shirking my responsibility in doing something. But knowing that that the consequence of anything happening with that critical infrastructure would have consequences across the whole foot, the whole toe of the harbor, it is unlikely that the town would absent itself in any way for the recovery process necessary to deal with a problem. So from the standpoint of having something tied up with a bow, having something really clearly specified, understanding and having it in paper form, that seems to be a pretty decent request <clears throat> to do this right before we, you know, the selectmen had us assist in this process because they did feel that they were not capable of undertaking this alone. And I think what we're saying at least in part, is that we pretty much may know what it is that you're going to need in order for this to get tied up and to have it be correct. And we don't have that yet. Right? Well, we that. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I understand. I've listened to it carefully. And, and, and I understand it just, it, it always seems like, it, it, it seems like you're, you're mixing up this warrant article option with the special permit. And they're, I'm they're not. I, and I've said this many times that they're, they're they're basically separate and 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 I've also said this many times that I believe that the board of selectmen wouldn't act on this until uh, after the special permit is done, and they would ask for our recommendation um, prior to um, concluding or even the start of negotiating the easements with the private. Uh, private landowner or owner of record. Um, but I just before we before we quit our deliberations, um, if there's a member of the public that has anything to add to what we've discussed uh, to date or what we're discussing, um, now's the time to uh, to put in your two cents. Uh, Lauren, can you? Can you cue that up? George has something that he wants uh, us to know about this. Yes, I've just promoted George to a panelist. He can speak to you now. Okay. Hi, George. Good evening, everyone. Just can you state your name and address? George McGoldrick. Yep, George McGoldrick, 107 Border Street. Thank you. Uh, so it's been almost two hours now. I have about five pages of notes I've taken I'm not going to spend a lot more time on it, but I did. I obviously want to address a couple of what I think are the key issues uh, for this. I do need to say up front, though, on the scale of the whole development, this is like so minor that it's unbelievable that it's taken its life of its own. Quite honestly, right? We were right. approached. We were approached last year by the town because they're doing some work on Elm Street and they're planning to do some work on Elm Street saying that we just realized that there's infrastructure on the property. So we went to, uh, I went up to Chris Senior's office and I said, look, you've got infrastructure on our property. We think we might want to have a little bit of room for, for an access over here. Can we do a land swap? And he said, well, that would take not only town meeting, but also state legislature. He suggested, how about an easement, cross easement? And I was like, fine, that's, Cross me, easements are mutual. We get something out of it, you get something out of it. See, it's a very simple concept. And then here we are almost 12 months later, spending 
everyone's time on an article that doesn't even grant the easements. All it does, as many people have said tonight, all it does is allow the selectmen to do it. And with the changes that were made last night, make that the, the, these, this easement wouldn't get done until your process is done. So get it, we're not going too fast because this has been talked about for a year. We're not uh, trying to preempt anything or get anything passed because nothing is being done with this with the exception of allowing the Board of Selectmen to deal with this at some time in the future. And the reason, it's, the reason that we support it being done now at this town meeting is because we don't know how long, A, your process is. For example, to Amy's point about we may finish before the next town meeting, we don't know when the next town meeting is, and you may not be finished by the next town meeting. And then we would have to wait till this spring again. But even with all that said, this is a very minor issue. This is allowing us to cross your property and you to cross ours. It's, it's not, and, and the last point about that is that even if we weren't doing the development, you, you need this anyway. We don't need to cross your land. We have four other access points. Right. The town needs it. So yep. even if there was no development, you guys would be coming to us to ask for it. And the fact that we're town residents for 30 years, and we've been doing a lot for the town to get into issues about whether there is any prescriptive easements and fights. I mean, no, I mean, we're trying to walk down the aisle together on a project and someone's asking for the divorce papers. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. So to Amy's point, no, there's no calamitous reason why we say that you have to get this easement today or tomorrow. This is a part of the process that we've been working on for 18 months and that we've known about this easement question for both of us for 12 months. Um, the ownership issue, Paul, more than happy to explain it to you really quickly. As you know, we took over the project from he who shall not be named, this person. That person had a long list of uh, legal issues. And instead of, uh, as real estate people, what you probably would have done in this situation is let it fail and then go in and get it for a real cheap price. The problem with that is, is that the night that we sh finally shook hands with the previous owner, Com Comcast was at his front door at the red line to shut off the electricity. This was 4.30 on a Friday afternoon and the wedding party was walking in. There was a wedding that night. So if we didn't step in that October, a year and a half ago, front page of the Boston Globe would have been, bride shows up for a wedding in Cohasset and the doors are locked and closed because there's no electricity. So we took over a project that had a hundred problems with it. And we've been able to fill, I, I told somebody the other day, we took over a project that had a, a boat that had a hundred holes in it. And we filled, we have to date filled 95 of those holes. And then a tsunami just came in, in the version of a pandemic and shut us down. One of the holes we haven't finished yet is the record ownership of the Cohasset Harbor Inn. There's a lawsuit going on between a previous, the previous owner and a friend of his who lent him money. It doesn't involve the property, but in trying to help everybody resolve this, we said that we would not record the deeds until they resolved it, but they had a, they had a time frame of like another 20 or 30 days to get that done. So we have recorded, execu we have executed deeds for the property sitting in escrow at, at, a, at the lawyer's office. So we are the owners. We have a document from the previous owner that gives us 100% total control. The previous owner has a very, very small minority interest in the property, which we've told, we've said all along. He's got zero control. He's got zero rights. And he's physically out of the country, been out of the country. So we, there's a legal opinion when this came up last Friday, there's a legal opinion that the Board of Selectmen received on Friday from council saying that we are the legal owners. And that's myself uh, and Paul, I've met you a couple of times, but quickly 30 year residents, been involved in about a dozen town functions on different boards and, and uh, things, uh, was the co-founder of the Turf Field Project 11 years ago. Uh, I lived in four, three different houses. So I've been here for a long time and I've done a lot of things with the town. 
My neighbor down the street is a 35 year resident. His name is Ted Lubitz. And he's also a real estate guy. And then the other two um, principals are Al uh, Alex and Andrew Marconi. They're Citra guys who now live in Duxbury and they run the catered affair for the last 20 years. So they're the operating partners for the most part. So those are the principals. And I thought we had a good reputation. I'm hearing maybe we don't. That's fine. Um, I think we've proven what we've done in the past. Um, it's been successful and, and we are looking forward to dealing with this board over the next whatever it takes to get this done. So that's the ownership, that's the ownership question. I hope it resolves it. Does, does anyone, does anyone have a specific simple question for George? If, if not, then what I'd recommend for next step is how about if I read the, the draft language um, that, uh, town council, um, how they changed uh, the language that we voted on at our last meeting. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, why don't I just read it out loud and then we can decide whether we want to make, um, make a motion to, uh, to vote. Sure. And there's, there's actually, there's two votes that we'll need to take. One would be a vote to recommend this to be put on the warrant by the selectmen. The other vote would be to recommend this to town meeting. And typically when the warrant gets printed, who whatever committee has reviewed the language and voted on the language to, to recommend it to a town meeting, there's a, a list of the vote. Planning board voted 4-1, Board of Selectmen voted 5-0, uh, whatever it ends up being. I mean, uh, uh, sometimes advisory, since there's like nine of them, sometimes there's more likely to be a split vote. But does anyone have any, um, any questions at this point before I read the actual um, updated language? Clark, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to touch upon, um, I know there was discussion earlier and that there were letters from planning board members asking to rescind their vote, but I just wanted to clarify that that, that doesn't mean that they were actually rescinded um, and that if you did want to take that action, you would need to have a board motion to alter the vote that you took last time. Well, I mean, it, I, 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 when I checked uh, Robert's rules, you, um, you cannot uh, rescind an individual vote, but the board itself can rescind uh, a previous vote. Right, that's that's what I meant, is that just if you were looking to change what happened last time, that would need to be addressed um, because like you right. just stated, you can't individually rescind. I just wanted to make that point of clarification. Right. I think that it makes sense to make sure that we don't have two um, sets of language that we've recommended to the Board of Selectmen. So what we could do in sequence is uh, vote to rescind our previous vote, and then vote on the new language. Um, Paul, you have a question. No, Paul Brady. thank you for clarifying, Clark. So I was going to say, according to Lauren, you know, it doesn't matter whether I vote tonight or not. I've already voted aye. Is no, that, no, sorry. I just wanted no. to clarify that's that. What it, that's, what it, that's what it sounds like. So no. I, get, I understand we can't rescind our votes, but that's already pretty much a done deal I'm getting. That's, that's what I just got. No, I'm sorry, I didn't. That's that's an in, in misinterpretation. The vote that was taken on Monday, if you, um, as you indicated in your letter, wish to rescind that, we would the board would need to, as a motion of the board, reevaluate that because it was voted on. And um, you know, if you, like Clark just established, it would be in the best interest if you chose to move forward in this article anyway, so that there weren't two different votes on two different sets of language from the same article. It's just a housekeeping to address what's really being decided here. I didn't, I didn't know that your answer is locked in stone. And, and what I think it is, is, is three actual votes. We vote to rescind our, our previous recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Then we make a, a vote uh, to what we recommend regarding this warrant article to the Board of Selectmen. And then we make a vote on um, recommending the article to the floor town meeting. <clears throat> um, so in terms of uh, sequencing, why don't I just read this? 
Why don't you let people read it? I think it's hard in this setting to listen and and you're gonna, your eyes are going to want to read the words. Let us try to read I, it first, and then you can read it aloud. But I, I don't have to read it. I mean, you, I emailed this uh, to I, everybody. I, I think everyone's read it. Let, let every, yeah, I mean, is, is everyone, anybody, maybe has anyone not read it? Is, is that, anyone not read it or wants to read it or wants me to read it? And you can feel free to say, no, I don't want you to read it, Clark. We've read it already. I, I've already read it. Okay, I've certainly read it. Um, Paul, do you need time to review this? No, I've read it. Okay, Amy. Amy, you've read it, right? Uh, was that a nod? Is your you, and, I also said yes. Okay. By the way, I believe Robert's rules are that the individual has to ask the board if their vote can be rescinded. Right, and the board has to approve that. I think what you sent over was it general. Doesn't, it doesn't matter, but I think was Robert was for a general assembly, like a like a legislature. Uh, people do it; they do, but it doesn't matter. What matters is for us to move forward on this now. All right. Well, then um, the first uh, the first uh, motion I'll ask for is. Uh, does someone want to make a motion uh, to um, rescind the the vote on recommending specific language that was reviewed and presented on the 11th of May? So moved. Okay. Does someone want to second it? Second it. All in favor? Uh, give aye. me your name one at a time. Let's see. Amy, you go first. Amy Glassmeyer, aye. Eric Potter? Eric Potter, aye. Paul Caleri? I'm confused. I, I don't understand what's going on. So what, you're going to vote again? To yeah, now we're going to vote it again. Stuff? We're going to write, we're going to make a new motion for the new language um, to recommend. Paul, Paul Caleri, aye. Okay, and Paul Grady? Aye. Clark Brewer says aye. Okay, so that our previous recommendation is now rescinded. Um, does someone want to make a motion to recommend the revised uh, warrant article to be put on the warrant by the selectmen. So moved. A second. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, then we'll go through the same list. Amy? I abstain. You're going to abstain. Okay. Uh, Eric? Aye. Eric Potter, aye. Okay. Uh, Paul Caleri? Paul Caleri, aye. Paul Grady? I'll say aye on sending to the selectman. Okay, and Clark Brewer says aye. It passes four um, in the affirmative and one abstention. Okay, the next, um, the next thing that we would want to do is vote um, for a recommendation on the floor of town meeting. Now that, now that we've recommended this go to the selectman for inclusion on the warrant, we can vote right now um, prior to the um, warrant getting closed that we recommend the um, we recommend the warrant article. Is there any discussion right now? Can someone make a motion to recommend the um, warrant article of granting easement uh, negotiations to the selectmen? So moved. A second? Second. Well, who seconded that? Was Paul Caleri? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, is there any further oh, discussion? Okay, then we'll take a vote. Uh, Amy Glassmeyer? Uh, Amy Glassmeyer, aye. Aye. Eric Potter? Aye. Okay, Paul Caleri? Paul Caleri, aye. And Paul Grady? Aye. Clark Brewer votes aye. It votes unanimously to recommend uh, this warrant article on the floor of town meeting. Now, um, thank you all for your patience. Obviously, it's, it's past eight o'clock, but it's nowhere near nine. It is entirely possible that no, even though we've recommended this to the Board of Selectmen, that they could have some other ideas between uh, now and their next meeting. But what we will do is either Lauren or I or both will get on advisory's agenda tomorrow 
uh, to tell them what we've um, what we've done um, and what the issues are that have been uh, discussed, uh, so that they can uh, also take a revote uh, prior to um, the selectmen's next meeting. Is I'm sorry, it's the twenty twenty sixth. I think, can you confirm that, Lauren? The next can, board of selectmen meeting? The selectmen uh, meeting that they would be voting on is the 26th, a uh, week from yesterday? Yes. Okay. Can, can I write, can I ask, I, can I just, yeah. re, I mean, before we, Eric, I, I, just very quickly, and this is for the benefit of everybody, and I, I think I agree with, um, with, with George's position that, um, this was two hours it took, and this was a very, um, a, a, you know, wasn't a big thing, um, which it took two hours for us to deliberate over. And my, my, my greater point is that there's going to be much bigger issues coming in front of us. And, and that's why I think it, I think kind of moving that schedule up or consolidating it um, to allow for additional meetings uh, at the back end of things. if to avoid a time crunch, maybe the best way to go, because I, it just seems to me that there could be a lot of hours in front of us, um, especially when you, when you think of, you know, the time that we just spent. And yeah. I, the last thing anybody, we want anybody on the, any of us, I think it's all for in our best interest to, to, to not be under the pressure individually or as a board, because all that's going to come out of that is frustration and, and, and really not the best work product in the, what, you know, the best final um, decision on our end. So I think it, considering the fact that we tend to get a little long um, in our deliberations, it, it may really make sense to kind of give us some, some wiggle room at the back end of things. If this looks like something that may want to be on the fall warrant. I think that's a good point, Eric. Well, why don't we cover that? Cover some ground on that after Lauren has a chance to kind of take yeah. uh, and absorb our um, considerations um, on the third when we look at a revised uh, schedule. Does that make sense, Lauren? That makes perfect sense to me. Okay, and um, before we um, conclude the meeting, Lauren, do you have anything else uh, that we need to attend to tonight? No, we will address um, approval of minutes at the next meeting. And then just to tell you more about the next meeting, again, it's, it's July 3rd. We are planning to hold a joint- You mean June 3rd? I'm sorry, yes. It's been a long week and it's only Wednesday. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I meant June 3rd. Our next okay. meeting is June 3rd, thank you. Um, we will be holding a joint session at the beginning of that meeting with the Board of Selectmen to address the housing production plan, which I've spoken to you about in the past. Yeah. This is again, one of the things we were supposed to do in March and then coronavirus happened. So. Um, and the second thing we will be doing is, um, which will be a quicker portion with the Board of Selectmen, is the hazard mitigation plan. You had all heard from Ann Herbst earlier in the process. This is the plan that's, um, you know, talking about natural disaster preparedness. And this is just, again, um, a final formal presentation to both boards to wrap up that process. So we will address those two items at the beginning of our next meeting, and then we will move into uh, our regular meeting agenda. So we are okay. looking at a 6.30 start time. Does that work for people? It's fine with me, but yes. we have a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Yes. On the 3rd of June to review the housing production plan. Yes, okay, and the housing mitigation plan. Okay, all right, great. And then we will resume, like I said, regular meeting agenda items for the planning board. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, the interesting um, perspective on um, tired, yeah. When when the when we when we're discussing language that's basically very simple, sometimes things uh, even at town meeting, the the simpler the um, the warrant article, the more discussion there is about it, and the more complex um, a warrant article is, uh, people's eyes glaze over and they. Um, uh, it passes, uh, and you know it's sort of a human nature thing to 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 know what you know and and uh, to to try and uh, to try and uh, figure things out. But I I just want to say how I appreciate everybody's uh, level of effort and stamina um, on uh, working through this uh, this easement um, warrant article issue. I really appreciate everyone's perspective, 
and I want to continue having robust uh, conversations about uh, future projects. Thank you. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Aye. All in favor, Clark. Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>